Welcome to Fort Bend Tutoring. Today we will be teaching you on a new subject of which you might find interesting. Please put your cigarette down and pay attention for a minute. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, FBT. So today's lesson is gonna be about graphing linear inequalities, ladies and gentlemen, on the Cartesian plane. Let's talk about it, all right? Okay, so first of all, when dealing with graphing linear inequalities, ladies and gentlemen, I will prefer to have all the equations written in the form of the slope-intercept form, that y equals mx plus b form. Remember, y equals mx plus b, the m is the slope, whereas the b is the y-intercept, ladies and gentlemen. In other words, that's where I'm going to start graphing on the xy axis, all right, on the y-axis in particular. And I want to go over some notes with you quickly. First of all, this symbol is the greater than symbol, and we always read our inequality symbols, ladies and gentlemen, from left to right. So notice as I look at this symbol from left to right that the big N is on the left, the small is on the right, so therefore this is a greater than symbol. Notice that this second inequality, I have the small n first and then the large n. So this is a less than symbol. So if you hit the small n first, it's less than. If you hit the big n first, it's greater than. Next, we have the greater than or equal to symbols. Not only can our solutions be greater than the value, they can also be equal to the value. And then, of course, this is the less than or equal to symbol as well. All right. So that's what we'll be looking at today. Not only do we need to know what to do with the inequality symbols, whether it be greater than or less than or equal to, we also also need to know how to represent our inequalities on our graph. If you have a less than or a greater than symbol, you'll be using a dashed line, ladies and gentlemen, because the solutions are not on the line. So that's why I use a dashed line. If it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you will use a solid line because the solutions are also on the line. In addition to that, you'll be shading. And there are some generic shading rules, ladies and gentlemen, for these inequalities. And keep in mind that I don't use these rules. But for you, I'll go ahead and show it to you anyway. If you have a less than or a less than or equal to symbol, you can generally shade down or to the left. If you have a greater than or greater than or equal to symbol, you can generally shade up and to the right. But I don't use these, ladies and gentlemen. I prefer to use a test point so I can guarantee that I have the correct area shaded on the graph. All right, so let's check it out together. In our first example, ladies and gentlemen, I have the inequality x is greater than or equal to 3. If you remember from our previous videos, x equals to a number is what type of line? Yeah, that's right. It's a vertical line, ladies and gentlemen. So anytime you have the format of x equals to a number, you're going to always be dealing with a vertical line. Amen, amen. And since this inequality is in the format of a vertical line, then we can start by saying, oh, okay, well, this is going to be a vertical line. I need a graph. Since it's a greater than or equal to symbol, we'll be using a solid line on our Cartesian plane. So this is exactly what I'm going to graph. So at 3, remember, this was x is greater than or equal to 3. At 3 on the x-axis, I'm going to draw a vertical line. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. So that's my vertical line there. And since I have a greater than or equal to symbol, I also know that I need to shade to the right, okay? So, because I'm gonna shade to the right, I'm gonna make it look just like this. All right, so this is me shading. So the solutions are gonna be on the line and to the right of the line, ladies and gentlemen. If you heard me earlier saying that I use a test point, I can simply use the origin as a test point, and I can say, is zero greater than or equal to three? And that answer is no, it's not. So since the origin is not part of the solution, that means I need a shade on the other side of the line. So once again, if you use a test point, my favorite test point is the origin. And since the origin's ordered pair is zero, zero, I can plug in zero for x and see if that's a true statement. So zero is not greater than or equal to three. So that's why I did not shade to the left. I shaded to the right. Okay, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. So you can use those generic rules that I gave you on that first page, or you can use a test point. Mr. Witt will be using a test point. All right, so let's move on to the next one, ladies and gentlemen. Problem number two. In problem number two, I have y plus two is less than negative two. So first of all, what I want to do is I want to solve for y. Remember, I like to have my inequality set up in that slope-intercept form. So this becomes y is less than negative four. So with this y is less than negative four, notice that we have the format of y equals to a number. And when you have the format of y equals to a number, you should know that you'll be dealing with a horizontal line, ladies and gentlemen, a horizontal line. 
That's right. So all I have to do is graph a horizontal line through negative 4 through that y-axis at negative 4, ladies and gentlemen. But keep in mind that this is a uh, less than sign. That's right. So you will be using a dashed line in order to graph it. So I have a dashed line here. Got my dashed line over here, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, got a dashed line there. And since it's gonna be less than negative four, remember using your generic rules that I gave you earlier, you'll just be shading down. And that's it, all right? So that's what your graph looks like. You'll be shading down underneath that. If you use that test point that I told you about, the origin, ladies and gentlemen, then if I plug in zero here, is zero less than negative four? That answer would be no. That's why I do not shade above the line, but beneath the line, because that's where my solutions would lie. All the points below this line would make this original inequality a true statement. And that's the graph of this. You got it. Done and done. Yep, so far, easy, right? Let's move on. All right, now to the good stuff. A lot of you guys have been waiting to say, hey, hey, my questions don't look like that. They look like this. Exactly. So that's why I showed you those easy smeezy problems first. And now we have problem number three. Mm -hmm. So with 2x minus 3y is greater than or equal to negative 6, we want to solve for y first. My preferred way to have it set up is in the slope intercept form, ladies and gentlemen. That's how I roll. That's how I roll. Okay, so let's go ahead and subtract 2x to both sides. Let's do that. Subtracting 2x to both sides here. My 2x's cancel out. I'm going to bring down my negative 3y, which is greater than or equal to a negative 2x minus 6. And then remember that anytime you have a coefficient, a number in front of the variable, you need to divide everything by that value, ladies and gentlemen. So in this case, I'm going to divide everything by negative 3. Yup. Dividing everything by negative 3. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, anytime you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative value, you must change the direction of the inequality symbol. Remember, another definition for a negative sign is the opposite. And since I'm dividing everything by the opposite, I have to have the opposite inequality symbol. All right, so let me show you what it looks like. I'm going to cancel out those negative threes and rewrite this as y is now less than or equal to 2 thirds x plus 2. So that's what I have. Y is less than or equal to 2 thirds X plus 2, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're going to graph. So we're going to start at 2 on the Y axis because this, ladies and gentlemen, that 2 right there, that's my Y intercept. Mm -hmm. Remember that Y equals MX plus B. The M is the slope value, whereas the B value is the Y intercept where the line crosses the Y axis. Keep that in mind. So here I'm going to start with a point at 2 on the Y axis, just like that. Then I'm going to use the slope, which is two-thirds. So from this point, I'm going to go up two places, one, two, and then over to the right three, one, two, three. All right. From there, I'm going to notice that that inequality symbol is less than or equal to, so that means I'm going to use a solid line in order to graph it. All right, so it's going to look about like this. And this is where I choose to use a test point. And generally, I'm going to use the origin as my test point. Remember that ordered pair, ladies and gentlemen, is 0, 0, okay? So here I just circle that origin to remind you that's what I'm using as my test point. If I plug in 0 for y and 0 for x, you'll end up with 0 is less than or equal to 2 because the 0 will wipe out that 2 thirds x there, right? So replacing y with 0 and replacing x with 0, you'll end up with an inequality that reads as this. It'll read as is 0 less than or equal to 2. So is this a true or a false statement? Well, it just so turns out that 0 is less than or equal to 2. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I shade where the origin is. So this is where my solutions will lie, and that's going to complete my graph. Not only do we have to graph the line, we also have to shade it. Remember, if you use those generic rules, ladies and gentlemen, you'll still end up with the same result in this case, but it's just more accurate for me to use a test point. Notice that if it says less than or equal to, it does say on that first page to shade down beneath the line. So you would still end up with that correct correct answer, but I just have more confidence in using, ladies and gentlemen, the test points. All right, let's look at the next problem. In our next problem, notice that we already have it set up. It's y is less than negative 1 fourth x plus 1. So from this equation, ladies and gentlemen, I know that my slope is negative 1 fourth, and I'm going to write it as negative 1 over 4, and I know that my y-intercept is going to be 1. So I'm going to start on the y-axis with a point at 1, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I'm going to do. 
So that's what I have thus far. Then using the slope, remember the slope is the rise over the run. I'm gonna go down one from this point and then over to the right four places. One, two, three, four. So here I have a point right there. So because my original inequality has just a less than symbol, we're gonna represent this inequality with a dashed line. All right, okay, so let's pretend that's straight, right? Since this inequality line does not go through the origin, I can still safely use the origin as a test point. The only time you can't use the origin as a test point is if the line goes through the origin, ladies and gentlemen. In that case, you can just pick another point on the axis to plug in, all right? But I prefer the origin if it's available. So here, going back to that original equation, if I plug in zero for y and zero for x, I'll end up rewriting this as zero is less than one. So is this a true or a false statement? So zero is less than one, and that's true, so that means I shade where the origin is, ladies and gentlemen, so that means I'll be shading in this direction right here. So not only do I need to show that the line is dashed, all right, I also need to shade the area where the other solutions will lie, ladies and gentlemen. Remember that inequality will have an infinite number of solutions. So not only is it necessary to graph the line, it's also necessary to graph the region, the area, where the remainder of the solutions will lie, okay, where the other solutions lie. If you were to choose any of the points in this region, ladies and gentlemen, and plug it back into your original equation, it would make a true statement. Uh-huh, and that's why we have to shade that area. Okay, let's continue on, ladies and gentlemen. All right, in our next example, I have x minus 2y is greater than 2. So here, what I'll do is, once again, solve for y. That's right, and that's a preference of mine, ladies and gentlemen. So you can use the xy chart method of doing it. You can use your x and y intercepts if you choose to go that route. But me and my family, we're going to be uh, solving for y. Okay, then in this next step, I'll be dividing everything by the coefficient. That's negative two, right? So dividing everything by negative two. That's what's going on. That's what's up. Canceling out those negative twos, ladies and gentlemen, I now will bring down my variable y. And remember, since I divided everything by a negative sign, you have to change the direction of the inequality. So this becomes less than one half x minus one. So that's what I end up with with this inequality, ladies and gentlemen. Y is less than one half X minus one. So that means that my slope is one half and my negative one is the Y intercept. So that's where I start on the graph. I'm gonna put a point right here at negative one, okay? And don't you tell anybody, all right? That's between you and me. Then using the slope, I'm gonna go up one and over to the right two. So I go up one and then over to the right two and I have a point right here, ladies and gentlemen. And then because I have a less than sign, do I use a dashed line or a solid line? Very good, very good. I use a dashed line, you're absolutely right. You are absolutely right, good job. Good job, you are on fire today, on fire. That's right. So with that dashed line, the next thing we need to do is to determine whether we need to shade above the line or below the line. For me, ladies and gentlemen, I prefer using that test point. So that means I'm going to be replacing y with 0, replacing x with 0, and I'll end up with the inequality is 0 less than negative 1. Well, ladies and gentlemen, 0 is not less than negative 1 after replacing 0 in for x and y, so I know that my solutions do not lie where their origin is. In other words, I need to shade on the other side of the line. So I'm going to be shading down here. All right. So that's where I'm shading my solutions, and that is going to be the graph, ladies and gentlemen. And that finishes up problem number five. Amen, amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you had quite a few examples on this lesson today, and hopefully they get you a great start on graphing linear inequalities. Thank you. Once again, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. And go ahead and send us your audio or video file of yourself introducing our videos, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you include my name, Mr. Witt, and Fort Bend Tutoring, okay, FBT. So once again, we appreciate it, and take care. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye. We appreciate your time. Don't you want to learn mathematics the correct way? You need a foundation. Do not just be guessing at your numbers. Contact us today. Look us up on your Facebook at Fort Bend Tutoring. Learn it well, honey.